Welcome back to more Trig Identities, and this is going to be the first video where we start proving identities. And the first two videos were to discuss some of the steps you'll use. Now, we're just going to get to it. Um, now, here's the thing. Some of you are going to find this to be a little bit easier because we know what we want to do. Now, here's the thing you have to choose, is which side do you want to work with? Now, typically it's easier to take something big and make it smaller rather than take something small and make it big. But honestly, the choice is yours. You can go in either direction. It does not matter as long as you are using mathematically correct steps. If you make up some new math we've never seen before, it's not going to work out for you. Okay? So here's the thing. This question is basically saying, turn this into that or turn this into that. The key is, is you're only allowed to use one side. So once you decide which side you're going to simplify, you just roll with it and you just keep on working until you can't work no more because you'll know that it's equal to the other side. Very important that you follow mathematical correctness and also to keep it equal in every step. So let's go. Again, it's easier to take something big and make it smaller. So I am going to work on the left side and turn it into the right side. So the first thing I am going to do is rewrite the tangent and cotangent. Now you can just distribute right now if you want to. There are so many different ways to do these identities, it's not even funny. I've seen people do four-step proofs and turn them into 10-step proofs. As long as you are mathematically correct, it's cool. But the reason I'm choosing that is because your final answer is in terms of sine and cosine only. So I'm just going to get rid of the tangent first. So we have cosine x. Tangent is sine x over cosine x plus cotangent is cosine over sine. So this is going to give us sine x cosine x over sine x and of course that is equal to sine x plus cosine squared x before you ask me yes you have to write what it's equal to every time now I'm going to distribute cosine x into here so now we have sine x cosine x over cosine x plus sine x cosine squared x over sine x and that of course is equal to sine x plus cosine squared x. Alright, so you can see we're already making some progress because those cosines cancel and these sines cancel. So, look what you just did. All you're left with is sine x plus all you're left with is cosine squared x and that's equal to the exact same thing. So you are done. First identity over with. Okay? So that's what you're doing. You're just using good mathematical practice to turn one thing into another thing. Um, this next one, I would recommend that you start with the left. Because if you start with the left, it's easy to turn things to make it smaller than it is to get very creative and try to figure out a way to turn a cosecant into something much bigger. So, why don't you pause the video? I will give you a hint. Your first step should be adding fractions need a common. You go. So, you needed a common denominator. So this side needs a 1 plus cosine x, and this side needs a 1 minus cosine x, because your common denominator is 1 minus cosine x times 1 plus cosine x. Don't you dare think you can just make a negative or something or add a 2. You have to use common denominators in terms of multiplying. So that's going to give you 1 plus cosine x and then over here we're going to have adding 
1 minus cosine x, and that's all over your common denominator of 1 minus cosine x and 1 plus cosine x. And that, of course, is equal to 2 cosecant squared x. Um, so what are we going to do here? Well, there's a couple of different things, but we're going to simplify uh, the top and bottom in one step, which is allowed to do. Uh, we have 1 plus 1, which is 2, and then we have cosine x and a negative cosine x that are just going to cancel each other out. So that's 2 over. And what we're going to do is foil the denominator. So 1 times 1 is 1. 1 plus cosine x is cosine x. Negative cosine x times 1 is negative cosine x. And negative cosine x times a positive cosine x is a negative cosine squared x. And that's still equal to 2 cosecant squared x. Okay, and again, you should notice that these guys cancel. So you're left with 1 minus cosine squared x, which by now you should know is a Pythagorean identity. So 2 over 1 minus cosine squared x is sine squared x. And I'm sure you already see the next step. Sine squared x in the denominator is the same as cosecant squared x in the numerator. So that right there we're going to have to just say is 2 cosecant squared x is equal to 2 cosecant squared x. Done! Okay, another identity solved. Um, number 3 is actually extremely simple because the left side is bigger than the right side and it's just factoring. So that's just the difference of two squares. That's cosine squared x plus sine squared x times cosine squared x minus sine squared x. And that, of course, is equal to the given cosine squared x minus sine squared x. Now, last time I checked, cosine squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1. And 1 times anything is just what you see. So this guy's already done. So we have cosine squared x minus sine squared x is equal to cosine squared x minus sine squared x. So sometimes they're very easy if you see the first step. And the first step was to just factor using difference of two squares. Last one. Um, it's easier to simplify adding into multiplying than turn multiplying into something of two terms. So first step, tangent x is sine x over cosine x plus cotangent is cosine x over sine x. And that's equal to secant x times cosecant x. You need a common denominator to add fractions. Common denominator will be cosine times sine, so this guy needs the cosine, this side needs the sine. So you have sine squared x plus cosine squared x all over cosine x, sine x. That's equal to secant x, cosecant x. In the top, you have the Pythagorean identity. So it's 1 over cosine x, sine x. And then you just need a reciprocal. Last step, secant x, cosecant x is equal to secant x, cosecant x. That's identities. Get one side to look exactly like the other side. Is this long going on?